In this lesson, we move on to triple integrals. And uh, a general problem that we'll try to be considering with triple integrals is that if we know uh, the density of some quantity in terms of something per unit volume, uh, then how do we calculate the total amount of that something in a given volume? So for concreteness, let's consider mass, uh, a mass density in terms of kilograms per meter cubed uh, when integrated over a volume gives us total number of kilograms. And so for instance, we could have a density function defined everywhere in space and a volume of any shape. Uh, it could be this peanut shaped volume here. And we could ask ourselves the question, what is the total amount of mass uh, enclosed within this peanut shaped region if the density within that region is given by the function sigma of x, y, and z? Now, the approach that we'll use to compute this quantity will be a Riemann sum, as with all other integrals that we've done. The idea is that we slice a domain, any domain, into tiny subdomains, each of which has a volume, and we call those subvolumes uh, delta v i, j, k. Since there's three coordinates now, a triple three-dimensional object, triple integral, is going to have three indices. We then compute the approximate contribution from each of those volumes to the total quantity, in this case for concreteness, mass. So given a tiny subvolume, delta V i, j, k, and an approximate density within that subvolume, uh, sigma of x, y, and z within that volume, then approximately the total amount of mass in that volume is sigma times the volume itself. Density times volume gives us mass. So then we add up all of these small contributions to volume, all of the small volumes times density, add them up over all the indices, and take the limit as the small volumes go to zero size to get the fully accurate answer. And that result is what we call the triple integral because there are three sums over three indices. We get a triple integral of the density function, sigma, and in the limit, uh, the delta v is replaced with the notation dv. And this notation here is called uh, a volume integral notation. It's a triple integral over some volume of a density function. Uh, this generic notation does not specify any particular coordinate system. And if you come across a random problem, your first task should be to choose the most appropriate coordinate system. In this lecture, we'll begin with Cartesian coordinates. And in Cartesian coordinates, we, of course, have uh, small cubes, delta x, delta y, delta z. And the volume of those small cubes is delta x, delta y, delta z, giving us, for the mass, uh, the integral of sigma dx dy dz in the integral notation. Now, in the simplest situation, we'll be integrating over some large region that is itself cubic in nature, where a goes between two constants, y goes between two constants, and z goes between two constants. In that case, the integral f dv becomes the integral of f dx, where x goes from a to b, dy, y goes from c to d, and dz, z goes from e to f. This is now uh, a triple integral notation, <clears throat> where specific bounds have been given on each integral and coordinates specified. Like we saw with double integrals, this can be evaluated sequentially. When we integrate f of x, y, and z in x, we hold y and z constant, and the x integrates out, leaving us with just a function of y and z. We then integrate that with respect to y, holding z constant. The y integrates out and gives us only a function of z. Finally, we integrate that function of z from e to f, and we get a scalar, which is what we expect if we're trying to calculate something like mass, which is expressed as a number. So for example, we'll compute the following triple integral. We have an integrand, x cubed y squared z. We have coordinates, x, y, z. And we have bounds, x from 0 to 3 on the inside, y from 0 to 2 in the middle, and z from 0 to 1 on the outside. We begin by integrating in x to get 1 quarter x to the fourth, 
x goes from 0 to 3, y squared and z are treated as constants, giving us 81 quarters y squared z. That is then integrated with respect to y, giving us 1 third y cubed z on the inside. The y is then evaluated from 0 to 2, uh, giving us another constant times the integral of just z. That gives us 1 half z squared from z 0 to 1. And the result of these three constant products of these constant is the volume itself. Now we can move on to something more complicated. As we saw for double integrals, the bounds of the inner integral can depend on the variables of the outer integral. In this case, there are outer integrals, and so there are outer variables. And so the inner integral in x can depend on y and z. When we integrate a function like this in x and evaluate it at an endpoint which depends on y and z and another endpoint which depends on y and z, we still get a function of y and z like we did before. The next integral, the middle integral, can have its boundaries be functions of z and still get a function of z at the end. The outermost integral, however, still must be a constant if we want to get a scalar. And this ability to be more flexible in a triple integral giving us a scalar allows us to integrate over regions that are not cubes. So for example, we can find the mass of a familiar object, a tetrahedron with specified vertices, and a specified density. With density x plus y plus z is zero at the inner apex of the tetrahedron at the origin and increases as we move out towards the outer plane. To fully specify this region, however, this three-dimensional region over which we are going to integrate this density function, we must parameterize the entire three-dimensional object. We notice immediately that this top surface can be expressed as a plane, and with a little bit of work, we could find that the equation for that plane is z equals 1 minus y minus x. This is one equation in three unknowns and gives us a two-dimensional object, the plane. This line here, however, in the xy domain is y equals 1 minus x. And so to fully specify this three-dimensional object, we can use the three sets of bounds. x goes between 0 and 1. On that domain, x from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to 1 minus x. And within that triangle on the xy plane, z goes from 0 to 1 minus y minus x, as so, for instance. And so this set of three bounds fully describes the three-dimensional tetrahedron that we are trying to integrate over. So the integral for the mass of this object can be written the integral from z, 0 to 1 minus y minus x, y from 0 to 1 minus x, and finally on the outside, x from 0 to 1 of our integrand x plus y plus z. Now it's just a matter of carrying out the three single integrals. Integrating in z gives us xz plus yz plus 1 half z squared, into which we must substitute the expression z equals 1 minus y minus x. This requires a little bit of algebra, but we can see that this will lead to uh, products and terms of the uh, quantity x plus y. Here we have x plus y times z, z equals 1 minus y minus x, but 1 minus y minus x itself can be written 1 minus the quantity x plus y. That gives us x plus y times 1 minus x plus y plus 1 half times the quantity 1 minus quantity x plus y squared. And this will lead to various products of the quantity x plus y, some of which cancel, as shown here, some of which which do not. We're left with 1 half minus 1 plus 1 half, or minus a half, x plus y quantity squared. And we'll take that 1 half outside the remaining integrals. Now we integrate with respect to y. The integral of 1 gives us y, and the integral of x plus y squared just gives us 
one third x plus y cubed. That's why we left it in terms of x plus y instead of multiplying it all out into every single possible term in that sequence. This is now evaluated from 0 to 1 minus x. The first term just gives us 1 minus x. The second term evaluated at 1 minus x gives us just a third. And when we subtract its value at 0, we get plus 1 third x cubed. This is now just a polynomial in x that can be integrated one more time and evaluated between 0 and 1 to give us a scalar for the total mass of the tetrahedron. Finally, it's worth noting that if the density function is simply 1, then the volume integral is just equal to the volume. And this allows us to compute volumes using triple integrals. So for instance, compute the volume of the region under the curve, under the surface rather, given by 1 plus 2x plus 3y squared, and above the region in the xy plane between the curves y equals x squared and y equals x. So this domain can be represented, x goes between 0 and 1. Within that domain, y goes between x squared and x. And within above this slice of the xy plane, uh, z goes between 0 and the surface 1 plus 2x plus 3y squared. So we have the triple integral, z from 0 to 1 plus 2x plus 3y squared, y from x squared to x, and x from 0 to 1 of 1 dv, which is written dz dy dx, because that's the order we have to do the integrals. When we do the first integral, this will just give us z evaluated from 0 to the surface. And so we simply plug in the surface. And we note that this is exactly the double integral that we would have used in a previous section to compute this same volume. It's worth at least pointing out that this is how it is done, though, uh, because it's a nice idea to say that we're calculating a volume using a volume integral, just as in previous examples we used uh, a surface integral of 1 to calculate a surface area. Nevertheless, we get now a double integral in x and y. We integrate in x plug in x squared and x and get various powers of x, uh, some of which are the same and can be combined. We integrate one more time in x to get various constant fractions multiplying powers of x, which we then plug in 1 uh, to get some fractions, which we add and subtract to get a number. 